Okay, dear students, this is Mustafa Ahmed Mirchawala from Mirchawala Sub of Accountancy. Uh, today is our revision day for F7 for June 2023 attempt. Okay. Before we start, let's discuss the objective. What is the objective of the, these sessions, these revision days? Already, you know, those who are studying from me, they know I have covered almost all past papers, all past papers, all latest past paper, even the latest, very latest past paper. Uh, kindly turn off your cameras, all of you, please turn off your videos. Otherwise, it will affect our recording, please. So, I have already recorded all past papers, even the very latest past paper, which is available on accglobal.com. It has already been recorded, right? Okay. So, you have all the resources, but the thing is, the major thing is confidence. The last, as this is the last month going on, so the major thing which affects is confidence, okay? So, the objective of today's session is to inject confidence in you guys, right? Okay. Now, just for your motivation, I'm showing you the latest result, the latest results of uh, March 2023 attempt. You can see that these students see, these were the students, they all studied the way like you guys doing. Same thing, same thing. And you can see their scores, their scores, okay? Or if you want, I can show you the scores of last four attempts. In each and every attempt, student, students score like this. And they include some position holders as well, like this is Saudi at top. This guy scored, scored Kenya, highest marks in Kenya. So this is very routine. This is a routine paper. And I, I would say that this paper is the easiest of the paper of the total papers which I'm teaching because F7 has got a connection with F3. So whoever is studying F7, they have already studied something many things in F3. So it's a connective paper. Plus it has got a very good pass rate. It has an excellent pass rate. So when they can do, you can also do. They studied the same way. They did the lectures. They attended the revision days. They availed the marking facility. I would again reminding you, I'm again reminding you that you guys have marking facility for ratio analysis. We always give marking facility for ratio analysis. So those who haven't availed till now, they must, they must avail the marking facility. And what is that marking facility? I have sent you some questions. You can solve those questions and send back to me and we'll mark them and we'll give you proper feedback, okay? And what's the order? Send one by one. Send first question, then check the feedback, then apply that feedback in the second question, then do the second one, then apply the feedback in the third one and so on, on and so forth, right? Okay, in this way you can do. Because normally students, as this is a ratio analysis theoretical area, so students feel that they they have issues or something like that, there is a natural fear, okay? So the, the best solution is you avail the marking facility, you get, get yourself marked and check where are you standing, right? Okay, and I'm sure you guys have almost completed the course or about to complete the course. The deadline is almost like 10th May or 12th May. You should complete it by 10th May or 12th May still. If not possible, complete it by 15th May. At least 15 by 15th May, you should complete the, you must complete the course. Because if you have completed the course on time, then you can revise it properly. Then you can read the exam, the report. Yes, the most important thing, don't forget those, don't forget to read all the relevant articles and the best article is examiner report. Last two attempt examiner report. And this way you will come to know what mistakes the students are doing so that you don't repeat. You don't repeat in your exams, right? Solve the mock exam. And above all, in the last three days, I always recommend in the last three days, don't do any written work. In the last three days, try to solve kit orally. Complete exam kit orally. Like you see the question, Think about the solution, then watch, then see the solution like this. In this way, you can you can walk through the whole course complete. Each and every transaction will be re recalled in your mind. Okay, right? So try to follow these things. Also, you have those who are doing final accounts. So, you know, 
when i teach final account i my order of teaching final account is like when i teach ies during ies classes i also teach final account adjustments and then again then again i teach in final account the same adjustments so it's it it becomes two times practice so it is easier so those who want to do final account first take grip in is ifrs right it is continued with is ifrs consolidation is a separate area and ratio analysis is definitely a separate area right okay so now we are moving towards mcqs as we have already in the in the last revision days which in the last time i conducted the revision day i have already recorded the very very latest past paper so there is no latest past paper available now on the internet so all latest past papers have been recorded and is available to you guys so that's why we are doing mcqs so that so that you can understand the techniques of mcqs as well and you know in mcqs there are a lot of variety so it's it's a good jogging of mind it's a good jogging of mind yes one more thing for your facilitation we have made a whatsapp group we have made a whatsapp group and there is a link of whatsapp group in the chat box i would request you guys to kindly join that chat that whatsapp group okay all of you please join the whatsapp group okay so that we can send things we can guide you through that whatsapp group there will be a it's easier for me to communicate with you guys through that whatsapp group okay now let's move on let's start how are the following how are the following items best classified in the statement of financial position in the statement of financial position kindly stop the video i have told many time all of you please stop the video don't turn on your videos thank you now how are the following items best classified in the statement of financial position an investment in preference shares see this is investment in preference shares investment you have not issued preference shares issuing preference shares is the other side doing investment is the other side so it's preference redeemable preference shares are loan redeemable preference shares are like loan loan notes so if you are buying a loan note that means you are giving loan to somebody so definitely you have a contractual right to receive cash so it's a financial asset contractual right to receive cash is a financial asset okay now next thing land that is held to benefit from an increase in value now hold 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 first of all land is not for resale not it's not held for sale so it's not held for sale not at all it's written increase in value if you are you buying the land for your own use if you are buying land for own use then it's property plan and equipment but if no none of these purpose then the default purpose is investment property hope you remember is 40 in is 40 it is it has been taught to you guys that land and building bought for rental earning purpose land and building bought for rental earning purpose number one or capital appreciation or normally both so capital appreciation means increase in value so if you buy an asset just for increase in value land and building for increase in value but not using it not using it for your own purpose so that's investment property that's definitely investment property that's definitely investment property okay now next Le this is very good legal cost legal cost now wait 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 it's this legal cost means unavoidable unavoidable legal cost normally i covered this thing in my class i covered this thing in my class let's listen to me for example somebody filed a case against me so i hired a lawyer so after some time lawyer told me sir there is just 20 percent chance there is just 20 percent chance that you will lose this case okay so i i got happy it's okay but then lawyer said sir whatever will be the outcome you win or lose you have to pay my fees you win or lose you have to pay my fees 
and you have to pay stamp duties and all these things. So this is what we call unavoidable legal cost. So unavoidable legal cost is payable irrespective of the outcome. So this is a for sure thing. This is a for sure confirmed thing. So there is no un there is no even uncertainty in it. There is no even uncertainty in it. So now we call it accrual. We will call it accrual. No need to call it provision. No need to call it provision. No need to call it provision even. Right? Okay. Why? Because the case has been started. So you availed the service, but not expenses which have been utilized, but not yet been paid are called accrued. So that's why we'll be using the word accrual for this, not provision. The word provision, the definition of provision, listen to me very carefully. Provision is a liability of uncertain timings or amount. Uncertain timings or amount. So this is pure certain. This legal cost is pure certain that you have to pay at any cost at a given, at, at an exact period of time. So there is no uncertainty. So that's why calling this liability as a provision is inappropriate, is inappropriate, right? Then tax arising on deductible temporary difference. I hope you remember there were two types of temporary difference in, in IS-12 DEFA tax. One was taxable TD and one was deductible TD. Taxable TD, when, when taxable TDs are multiplied by tax rate, we get DEFA tax liability. And when deductible TDs, deductible TDs are multiplied by tax rate, we get DEFA tax asset. We get DEFA tax asset, okay? So this is the answer. Now, just for your quiz, quickly tell me, can you guys tell me any example of deductible temporary difference in the chat box? Can you guys tell me any example of deductible temporary difference in the chat box? Can anybody tell me the example of, yes, very good, one example, unused tax losses, no. Yes, warranty. Excellent. Warranty because you have booked warranty expense now, but when you go to tax department, they will say, no, we are not allowing it now. We will allow in the future when you will pay. So that means in future, we'll get the tax benefit. Now, there is a question of consolidation for you guys. There is a consolidation for you question for you guys with with a little dodge with a very little dodge listen you remember p2s and s2p sales p2s and s2p sales if if you are doing listen to me if you are doing p2s sale so that means the unrealized profit is booked by parent company unrealized profit is booked by parent company and if it is s2p sale then unrealized profit is, is booked by S company, okay? And when unrealized profit is booked by S company, then definitely we need to adjust NCI as well. So whenever it is P2S sale, whenever it is P2S sale, we don't adjust NCI. But yes, whenever it is S to P sale, then we, we need to adjust NCI. Hope you remember this basic concept. Hope you remember this basic concept, this basic concept, okay? Now, Tremble buys 80% of the ordinary shares of 80%. First of all, see the holding. 80% means 20% is NCI. On 1st October X1, always highlight the date of acquisition. Always, this is the key for on 1st October X1, right? Now, when the day, at that date, the fair net assets of S company was 850, it's okay. The fair value of 20% holding, 20% holding means NCI. 20% holding means NCI. That means it means fair value of NCI. It means fair value of NCI. On this date is 210,000. 210,000. So if you want to calculate NCI for SOFP, if you want to calculate NCI for SOFP using full goodwill method, hope you remember it. the first line is fair value of NCI at acquisition. Fair value of NCI at acquisition is 210,000. Fair value of NCI at acquisition is 210,000. Add, add, add S companies, S companies post retained earning share. Hope you remember. 
S S companies post retained earning or post net asset share. Now look at the screen. In the year ended 30th September X2, Australian report. Australian means S company reports hundred thousand of the profit. Hundred thousand. This is the profit. And you call, and this profit itself means post retained earning. It's for the year profit and it is also called S companies post retained earning. If you are using your common sense, during this year, Pramble, Pramble sold goods. Pramble sold P to S. Pramble sold goods, which cost twenty five thousand for thirty five thousand. Half of these remain unsold. That means yes, there is a URP. Yes, there is a URP. But use your common sense. It's P to S or S to B. Is it P to S or S to P? It's P to S sale. When and when it is P to S sale, then it has nothing to do with NCI. When it is P to S sale, then it has got nothing to do with NCI. It has nothing to do with NCI. Okay, right? Okay. So just simply take this post profit, which is hundred thousand, and what is the holding percentage? It's twenty percent. So it's going to be 20,000. So 210 plus 20,000 is 230,000. This is NCI for SOFP. This is NCI for SOFP. Okay. NCI for SOFP. See the non controlling interest at the, that means as at 30th September X2, that means we need for SOFP. We need for SOFP. The answer is 230,000. The answer is 230,000. Now, the next thing is Edward incurred the following expenditure on improving and maintaining its property, plant, and equipment like IA 16. Okay. Now, read the requirement. What total amount can be capitalized as subsequent expenditure subsequent in the year on property, plant, and equipment? So, you know, we can capitalize. We can capitalize if it is an improvement. We can we can capitalize it if it is an improvement and if it is give if if it is increasing your future economic benefit if it is increasing your future economic benefit or it is your it is improvement okay now read the lines expenditure to increase the operating capacity yes obviously increasing the operating capacity will increase the output will increase the output of this whole show so yes it is proper improvement we are getting extra economic benefit on it okay expenditure to redecorate redecorate this is the expense redecoration is like listen already things were good we use it we use it so it came down and we maintain it to the redecoration like it's repainting so repainting it's like maintaining maintaining to the original quality maintaining to the original quality so this is not a capital expenditure this is a revenue expenditure expenditure to extend extend the warehouse to increase the storage capacity yes we'll get the economic benefit because of this we will be getting the economic benefit because of this right so this is also will Expenditure to repair, repair, it's proper repair. So it's an expense. So 250 plus 145, yes, 395K is the answer. 395K, 395,000 is your answer. 395,000 is your answer, right? Now next, this is an easier one. It's related to IAS2. It is related to IAS2. Hope you remember that famous line, inventory should be recorded at lower of cost or NRV. Inventory should be recorded at lower of cost or NRV. Now, look at the screen. You have three products and three different costs. Obviously, for three product, three cost, three selling price, and three cost to sell are available. So definitely, for each and every product, you need to check it separately. For each and every product you need to check it separately so first product selling price is 3500 cost to sell is 300 
3500 minus nrv nrv net realizable value is selling price less cost to sell so 3500 minus 300 will give you 32 okay now for the second one is 1400 minus 200 is 1200 and the third one is exactly again 1200 okay now look at the screen let's do it product wise product a Product A, the cost is 3400 and the NRV, NRV is 3200. So inventory should be recorded at lower off. So for product A, we will be using 3200. For product A, we will be using 3200. Now, product B, product B, cost is 1300 and NRV is 1200. Again, which amount is lower? This 1200 is lower, right? And then product C, in product C, Cost is 890 and NRV is 1200, so cost is lower. So can you add all these three blue highlighted? It's going to be 5290, answer is D. Answer is D, answer is D. Next one. So once again, you have consolidation. Once again, you have consolidation. Pink acquired 90%. That means 10% is NCI. 10% is NCI of sync on 1st April. The date is very important. 1st April 2013. The following are relevant to the year ended 31st December 13 to the year ended December 13. That means this is a mid year or part year acquisition case. Look at the screen. If the year end is December 13, so it's 1st January 13, the beginning, okay? And this is 1st April. So the gap between acquisition date and year end is nine months. The gap between acquisition date and year end is nine months, okay? The gap between acquisition date and year end is nine months, okay? Be careful with this. Now, think... This is a little technical, little technical. Pink reported profits for 320,000 for the year. Now use your brain. Parent companies is ours, 100% ours. Parent companies ours, okay? So parent companies profit will be taken 100%, right? For the group purpose, if you want group profit. So in group parent companies, 100% ours, okay? Now, sync reported profits of for 200,000 for the year. Now, S company has a profit of 200,000 for the complete year. S company has a profit of 200,000 for the complete 12 months. For the complete 12 months, complete 12 months. Now, can you tell me in this year, in this accounting period, S company belongs to us for just nine months. S company belongs to us for just nine months. So 200,000 times nine upon 12, times nine upon 12, this will be this will be 150000 this will be 150000 wait a minute this will be 150,000. This will be 150,000, right? Okay. So now parent company belongs to us. So complete 320,000 of parent company's profit belongs to group plus S companies belongs to us for just last nine months. So last nine months profits are 150. But again, check whether is there any P2S or S2P sale? Is there any P2S or S2P sale? Yes. In this question, Sync sold goods to Pink for 20,000 in the post acquisition period. In the post acquisition period, in the post acquisition period, right? But one, what is the good news? There is no URP. There is no URP. There is no URP. There is no URP. None of the goods remain in the stock at 31st December. So yes, there is S2P sale. There is S2P sale, but there is no URP at all. There is no URP at all. So these two lines are, so this line is irrelevant. This line is irrelevant, okay? So what we have to do, 320,000 is the P company's complete profit and S company's profit is 150,000. And what is the share of the group? What is the share of the group? 
S company's profit is 150, multiply by 90%, multiply by 90%. So it will be 135. So can you add these two? 320 plus 135 is 455,000. This is the answer. What are the profits attributable to the owners? Remember income statement. You hope you remember the three last three lines of income statement of consolidated income statement. Last three lines of consolidated income statement. So you guys have to write this thing. Profits attributable to equity owners of P company. So this is the answer. This is the answer for 55,000. Okay. Right. Now in the examiner comments, in the examiner comments, these things, examiner write these mistakes. There are students, they forgot to apportion it. See, the acquisition date in this question is very important. There are students because of tension or because of anything, they forgot this date. So if you take complete 12 months profit, still it would be wrong. There are students, there are students who forgot there in even in the chat box, you can see there are students who forgot to apply 90%. They just simply take 100% amount. They just simply take 100% amount. Still, you will lose the marks. Okay. And there are students who by mistake account for this S2P sale. This S2P sale is irrelevant because there is no URP because there is no URP at all. It is written, all the goods are sold. All the goods are sold, right? Now next. This is about IS12, the very routine question. Hope you remember the famous adjustment of final account of IS12, remember? We used to make this packet. Let me re let me remind you this packet. You remember this total tax packet, total tax packet. Now, let me show you. Cotton has a taxable profit. Cotton has a taxable profit of 430,000. You know, First of all, you need to calculate the current tax provision, current tax this year, current tax. And you know how to calculate this year current tax? Simply taxable profit multiply by your tax rate. Taxable profit multiply by this tax rate. Taxable profit multiply by your tax rate. Taxable profits multiply by your tax rate. So what is the taxable profit? 430,000 multiply by 30%. 430,000 multiplied by 30%. How much is this? 30%. Current tax provision will be 430,000 multiplied by 30% will give you 129,000. Right, 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 right. Now, now next thing we need to check, is there any under or over provision? Is there any under or over provision? So remember you used to go to trial balance. You guys used to go to trial balance. Now look at there. The trial balance series prior to the accounting year income and years income and effort tax. The trial balance at 31st December X8 show a credit balance in the on the income tax account of 2000. Now you tell me there is a credit balance. There is a credit balance. Yes, very good. There is a credit balance in the trial balance for income tax. So it's over provision. If it would be a debit balance, then it is under provision. But my dear student here, it is credit balance. So over provision. So over provision will be deducted. It's income. Okay. So over provision is 2000. Very simple. So till now we have completed the current tax portion. Till now we have completed the current tax portion. Current tax portion. Till now we have completed the we have completed the current tax, current tax portion. We have completed the current tax portion. Now let's come to the defer tax. Hope you remember we used to make this defer tax account. We used to make this defer tax account, defer tax account, right? We used to make this defer tax account. Now let, let me explain you, listen. The deferred tax provision of 230C in the trial balance. This is the trial balance. Let me enlarge. See this. See this. In the trial balance, in the trial balance, what is the 
defer tax liability. What is the opening defer tax liability? In the trial balance, the opening defer tax liability is 230,000. So opening defer tax liability is 230,000. Opening defer tax liability is 230,000. Open that op opening defer tax liability is 230,000, right? Now let's calculate the closing defer tax liability. Listen to me. Sometimes examiner gives you ready-made closing defer tax liability. Sometimes examiner gives you ready-made closing defer tax liability. And sometimes they give you taxable TDs, taxable temporary difference. So when taxable temporary differences are given, you just multiply it by tax rate. When taxable temporary differences are given, you just multiply it by tax rate. Look at here. So your yes, in this question, taxable temporary differences are given, it's 700,000. Can you see this? So how to calculate this closing? It will be 700,000 times 30%. This will be, this will be 210. Now, can you see opening defer tax liability is 230 and closing is, opening is 230, closing is 210. So what is the movement? It's a decrease. It's a decrease. So there will be an income. There will be a credit of 20,000. There will be a credit of 20,000, right? It's defer tax income or defer tax credit. So you will write less, you will deduct here less. So my dear student, can you tell me what is the total packet? Excellent. 107000 is your total. 107000 is your total tax packet. 107000 is your total tax packet. I have to give one answer for the last question. Somebody asking the question. Wait, I'm giving the answer. Don't worry. So look at the... Look at this question number 23. The answer of question number 23 is 10700. The answer of question number 23 is 10700. 10700. Okay. Now wait. I will send you the PDF. Don't worry on the WhatsApp group. Don't worry about it. Listen. Some people asking about this that what would be the NCI in this question? What would be the NCI? Although the examiner has not asked the NCI, the NCI will be, see this 150,000 for last nine months, multiply by 10%. NCI will be 10%, 150,000, 10% is 15,000, okay? NCI in this question will be 15,000. And if somebody wants me to write those three lines, let me write, I can write it for you. You remember you guys used to do like this, profits attributable to, equity owners of P company, right? Then you write NCI and then you write total profit. Now wait, what is the total profit? Total profit, what is the total profit? Listen, the total profit is the total profit is 320 plus 150, 320 for parent company and 150 for S company of last nine months complete 100%. So 320 plus 150 is, I think, 370,000 is the total profit, okay? Now 15,000 is the NCI. 320 plus 150 is one, right? Now take the difference. 370 minus 15 is four. Sorry, it's not 370, it's 470, my mistake. It's 470, sorry, I did addition. So this will be 455. Now, examiner asked you this thing. Examiner asked you this thing, okay? Many students opening camera, let me change the view so that Okay, so you guys understood this part. Now one more thing, this extra point, listen, 
in this question number 23 this 129000 will be reported in the sofps current liability because current tax is payable within 12 months within 12 months so this will be your current liability this will be your current liability and this closing to 10000 will be your non current liability this will be your non current liability this is your non current liability okay did you understood it please write on the chat box okay listen 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 now yes defer tax to 10000 in the sofp correct listen now the next thing is dear my dear students this is again a theoretical question related to is 37 consider the following situation the board of diamonds made a formal decision made a formal decision i hope you remember one thing restructure do you remember the restructuring provision there was a topic restructuring provision for for restructuring provision for restructuring provision for restructuring provision there was a two 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 points criteria number one you must have a formal plan you must we must have a formal plan the first thing and the second thing second thing is you have created valid expectation you have created valid expectation to those affected those who are going to be affected right so number one is formal plan and number two is the announcement or valid expectation communication yes so now read these two points are important both of them must be met before the year end so the board of diamond made a formal decision to shut a division of the company on 1st december 3rd x3 this decision was announced to workforce of that this decision was announced to the workforce on 6th of january 2004 that means not at the year end that means not at the year end the company's year end is 31st december and the financial statement are expected to be issued in march the board wishes to make the provision of direct cost of the closure no no why why you cannot make because there are two conditions number one is formal plan and number two is the communication number two is creating the constructive obligation right okay so as there is no valid expectation before the year end you haven't created the valid expectation before the year end that's why that's why you cannot book the provision okay so in point number one no provision now point number two one of the emeralds geographical divisions is expected to make loss in the coming year future now wait 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 no need to read you remember can we book provision for future operating losses can we book provision for future operating losses no 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 why there is no no present obligation there is no present obligation because in that case you can take u-turn you can take u-turn the business may be closed before that event the business may be closed before that event so you cannot book provision for future operating losses you cannot book provision for future operating losses future operating losses right okay so my dear students the the answer is d neither of them this is the answer you cannot book provision for any any of this right in point number one listen point number one is about restructuring and in rest you remember the restructuring criteria two things formal plan formal plan and number two you have created valid expectation to those affected so yes in this question there is a formal plan there is a formal plan but there is no valid expectation before the year end see they have communicated they have communicated on six see this date my dear students see this date they have communicated to workforce after year end after year end so there is no obligation at the year end yes it's non-existing now indicate whether indicate whether the following statements with regard to financial instruments are true or false are true or false a financial asset may be designated as measured at fair value through other comprehensive income a financial asset 
may be designated as measured at fair value through other comprehensive income. Tell me it's true or false. Any financial asset, see it is written any financial asset, any financial asset, read this word. Any financial asset, no, no, let me give you. If, you, if, it, if that financial asset is equity instrument, listen to me, if that financial asset is equity instrument, only if you have bought it for long term, and if you do election, then you can book. And if you are on the debt side, if you are on the debt side, debt side, that means you have invested in debt, then not all, not all financial asset can be recorded at fair value through OCI. Why? Because when you have invested in debt instrument, there was a category of amortized cost. There was a category of fair value through PNL. So if your business model is for long term, if your business model is for long term and for the collection of cash flows, you cannot record at fair value through OCI. So the word any, it's is dangerous. Any financial asset, no. So the answer is false. Now, see, this is the dodge. This is very technical. Listen to me. The, the theory MCQs are basically game of words. Theory In theory MCQs, you have to go for most appropriate answer. In theory MCQs, you have to go for most appropriate answer. So because of this, any, this line is false. Now, where a financial liability is measured at amortized cost. Now, this is the wholesale question of your final accounts. Remember, in final accounts, normally they don't test financial assets. In final accounts question of financial instrument, normally they ask you financial liability. Hope you remember. Remember that uh, issue cost, the discounts, the redemption premium, this area. This is really where a financial liability is measured at amortized cost. The finance cost, the finance cost includes interest paid together with amortization of the liability. Yes, true. Yes, listen to me. Even I, even I teach in this style that your redemption premium is also interest. Your redemption premium is just by name redemption premium. In reality, it is interest. So hope you remember we used to spread. We used to spread redemption premium over the life of loan through interest expense through effective interest rate, through effective interest rate, remember? So this is the same thing. Now, now this is a little bit unusual, but yes, we have covered in the classes. The third line is about financial assets, but it is, but we have covered in the classes like one or two questions. Transaction costs are added, are added to the initial measurement of the financial asset at amortized cost. It's true. It's true. Now wait. For example, See, it is written transaction cost of, this is financial assets. Transaction cost of financial asset. Financial asset means we are doing investment. We are not taking loan. We are giving loan. We are not taking loan. We are giving loan. We are investing in loan. So when you invest in loan or when you invest in shares, just simple. When you invest in loan notes or you invest in shares, there is a transaction cost like agency, agent commission or something. Even when you, when you invest in, even when you invest in stock market, there is an, they, you need to give commission, right? So when you invest in loan note market, still you have to incur some transaction cost. Now, that transaction cost is incurred immediately. So you, need, you have to pay cash now. So what you do, you have to credit cash. You have to credit cash. Now, what you will debit it? What you will debit it? Listen to me. First option is you can book PNL immediately. You can write PNL immediately, but if you write, but if you write PNL immediately, that means that transaction cost will go in expense immediately. Complete transaction cost will go in PNL immediately, and that is wrong according to matching principle. That is wrong according to matching principle because you have done long term investment. You have done long term investment. So, this investment will give you benefit for next five years. This investment will give you benefit for next five years. So, it should be spreaded. It should be spreaded. So, that's why you debit financial asset. You debit financial asset. And now, just think when you debit the financial asset, that means you are increasing the financial asset. You are increasing or adding. You are increasing or adding the financial asset. Okay. So hope you remember this thing. Even I made this entry in the class. I made this entry in the class. So there it is written. Transactions costs are added. Added. 
So once again, this is also true. This is also true. And one more technique is if you don't write financial asset here, the other thing is PNL. If you don't write financial asset here, other thing is PNL. And if you write PNL, that means it is against matching principle. It is against matching principle. Now next. At 31st October 16, at 31st October 16, Jameson has a total lease liability. See the word total lease liability, the last column. You remember all the columns of LAS, lease amortization schedule, LAS, lease amortization schedule. So this is about the last column. At 31st October 16, Jameson has a total lease liability outstanding of 45,000. The lease term requires payments in a areas of 5,000 areas means at the end of each year. Every 31st October, the interest rate implicit in the lease is 4%. Now, these are the two questions. These are the two questions giving you two minutes, giving you two minutes. Come on, solve it. Two minutes or 1.5 minutes, solve it. And then I'll solve it for you. Give me the answer, please. Excellent. Excellent. Correct. Now, let me show you. Listen, you remember these columns? Date, rentals, finance charge, decrease in obligation, balance, obligation remember so at 31st of december 16 the balance obligation was how much it was 45000 the balance obligation was 45000 the total lease liability now at the next year and obviously at the next year and you will be paying you will be paying total 5000 total rental is 5000 now can you tell me what is the interest expense for this year what is the interest expense? The last year, the complete last year outstanding loan was 45,000 and 45,000 times 4% is 1,800. So this is interest, 1,800. Now, out of this 5,000, 1,800 is the interest. Out of this 5,000, 1,800 is the interest. So 3,200 is your decrease in obligation. Now, can you take the difference between these two 45,000 minus 3,200? 45,000 minus 3,200 will give you 41,800. Now, hope you remember the lectures. Listen, we are standing here. See, we are standing at 31st December 16. We are standing at 31st of December 16. We are standing at 31st December 16, right? Okay. So if we are standing here, so this will be your current liability and this will be your non-current liability. Okay. This is very simple. So 3,200 is your current liability, right? Now the next thing. What happened when you go to next year? So next year, you have to pay this 5,000. And what is the double entry for this 5,000? See, you will credit cash or bank by 5,000. You will credit cash next year entry. I'm telling cash or bank by 5,000. You will decrease your lease obligation. Your lease obligation will be decreased by 3,200. And this is going to be 1,800 is your interest expense. 
Eighteen hundred is your interest expense. This is the entry for next year. This is the accounting entry for next year. Now tell me, in the next year statement of cash flow, I'm talking about IS seven statement of cash flow. In a statement of cash flow, you never record this five thousand together. You never record this five thousand cash flow together. Principal payment is a different thing. Interest payment is different thing. Principal payment is different thing and interest payment is different thing. Okay, so listen to me. Interest exp interest payment will go in operating activities. You remember our operating activities of cash flow after cash generated from operations, interest expense will go interest paid. And you know this lease obligation. Listen to me. Finance lease is like a loan. Finance lease is like a loan. So repayment of finance lease is like repayment of loan. Repayment of finance lease is like repayment of loan. So this thirty two hundred will go in financing activities. This thirty two hundred will go in financing activities, right? So if you have taken the lectures, you must remember this point. This point, right? Have a look. Have a look. Then I'll move the screen. Please look at the whole story. Now read the requirement. Read the requirement. What is the lease obligation payment? They are not asking about. They are not asking about interest expense. Read the line. What is the lease obligation payment in the statement of cash flow? IS seven. In the year ended thirty first October seventeen. So this will be thirty two hundred. Thirty two hundred. They are not asking about interest. They are just asking about lease obligation payment. Lease obligation means principal amount. So next year, the principal amount which we will be paying is thirty two hundred. The current liability you definitely will pay. Okay. So be careful. These this this was a quick big dodge. So for both requirements, for the first and second requirement, the answer is thirty two hundred. For the first and second requirement, the answer is thirty two hundred. Take your time. Take your time. Okay, next. Harrison acquires Harrison acquires the following financial assets in the year ended thirty first December twenty nineteen. Indicate how each should be classified. Indicate how each should be classified. Now, in point number one, there is a little miscommunication. Little miscommunication. An investment in equity shares of an unrelated company. Listen. When you buy equity shares, we all know there are two classes. When we buy equity shares, yes, it's a financial asset. When when you are buying equity shares, it's a financial asset, and you have two classes: fair value through PNL and fair value through OCI. But yes, for fair value through OCI, you need to do election, and there is nothing, there is nothing written about election. Then this is the default category. There is nothing written about election. Then this is the default category. That's why I'm going to take fair value through PNL. That's why I'm gonna take fair value through PNL. Be active. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. Be active. Be strong. You are doing exam preparation. Just think you are. You guys are doing exam preparation. Okay. Now, an investment in bonds. Bonds mean loan notes. An investment in bonds, loan notes, issued by Harrison intends to hold. Yes, till maturity. That means business model is long term. So it's amortized cost. It's amortized cost, right? If your business model is long term and you will get the return of principal and interest, it's it's amortized cost. Now, now that this name is a little bit new, but I'll explain. An interest rate swap. Interest rate swap that is an in the money. So you know, interest rate swap is a derivative. Derivative. It's a gam. It's a gambling product. It's a gambling product. So keep this thing in your head that gambling products are always recorded at fair value through PNL. Gambling products are always recorded at fair value through PNL. I will use a word in Hindi language or Urdu language, jua. It's a jua, right? It's a shart lagana, shart lagana, jua, right? So it's the gambling products will always go in fair value through PNL. Now, 
an investment in 8% loan notes loan notes loan notes you are doing you are doing investment in loan notes so that harrison holds is a business model to collect cash flows and sell it's a mixed model see this is a mixed model and if you have invested in loan notes with mixed model then the category is fair value through oci the category is fair value through oci hope you remember these things hope you remember these things Now, very good question, very good question. Normally I start my course with EPS, earning per share. So there is one thing what we call is basic EPS. In basic EPS, we take real profits, real shares, real profits, real shares. But what is diluted EPS? Diluted EPS is basically reality plus imagination, reality plus imagination, reality plus imagination. That means we incorporate the future events the future potential shares we incorporate the potential shares remembers potential shares what do you mean by potential shares potential shares are the agreement which are already signed and because of those agreements we have we have to issue new shares company has to issue new shares in future because of that company has to issue new shares in futures right okay now wait if you have attended the lectures properly, sometime I discuss I discuss this dilutive and anti-dilutive. Dilutive and anti-dilutive. For diluted EPS, we only take the this. We only take this dilutive. We never include anti-dilutive in the calculation of diluted EPS. We never include anti-dilutive potential shares in the calculation of diluted EPS. Why? Because we have to share, we have to pose the worst side. We don't have to pose the good side of future, right? Okay. It is the application. Diluted EPS is basically the application of prudence. Diluted EPS is basically the application of prudence remember okay giving you two minutes two to three minutes come on give me answer it's a very good excellent question it's excellent question so far two to three minutes all of you all of you all of you please Dilutive shares. Looks like not a single guy's position holder in this in this race. Okay, let me start. Let me start. Let me start. First of all, keep this thing in mind. Your right now, your basic EPS is 34.6. This is your existing basic EPS, right? Okay. Now, first thing is convertible loan note. For convertible loan note, we used to calculate two things. Hope you remember. Number one, number of shares from conversion. Number of shares from conversion. Number of shares from conversion. Listen. This is 1 million, 1 million loan notes, 6%. This is the interest rate. Okay. Now wait. And the ratio is one can, can be exchanged for ordinary shares for one for dollar 10 debt. One for, for every dollar 10 loan note. For every dollar 10 loan note, one share will be given. For every dollar 10 loan note, one share be given. Can you tell me? 
one divided by ten. One is how much percent of ten? One is how much percent of ten? It's ten percent. So I would say conversion terms are ten percent. Conversion terms are ten percent. Be strong. So the loan note is one million. Multiply by ten percent. Hundred thousand shares. They, these are these will be the new shares. These. These will be these will be the new shares, the new new incremental shares because of this transaction. See, the loan notes will be converted into hundred thousand shares. Okay, now the second line is just let me teach with my style. When you convert, when you go in your imagination, imagining world, imagination world, and when you convert your loan note into shares, your interest cost will be saved. Your interest cost will be saved. So there will be one more line incremental. After tax savings, incremental after tax savings. Now wait, 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 wait. This is the loan amount, and this is the interest rate. Hundred thousand is one million is the loan amount, and six percent in the interest rate. So one million times six percent is sixty thousand will be the interest saved. One million times six percent, sixty thousand is the interest saved. But when interest will be saved, your profit will go up, and when your profit will go up, tax department will come. Tax department will take thirty percent. Tax department will take thirty percent. So we'll only get seventy percent. So it will be forty-two thousand. See, your incremental after-tax saving will be forty-two thousand. Honestly, I I normally give four classes for EPS. Four classes normally three to four classes I normally give for EPS, and this is your first standard. Now. This is the additional profit, and this is the additional shares from this transaction. This is the additional profit, and this is the additional shares. Let's calculate the incremental EPS of this transaction. Let's calculate the incremental EPS of this transaction. Wait, what is the profit? The profit is forty-two thousand, and shares are hundred thousand. So this is forty-two cents. Forty-two cents per share. This is forty-two cents per share, my dear student. Now use your brain. Listen. What is the existing EPS? Basic EPS is thirty-four point six. Basic EPS is thirty-four point six, and your incremental EPS of convertible loan note is forty-two cents. That means convertible loan note is a rich guy, and no need to include this rich guy. This is anti-dilutive. This is pure anti-dilutive. Okay. Yes. Sim right now we don't need to decide if it's reported or not. We they are asking about dilutive and anti-dilutive. They are asking about anti-dilutive and dilutive. Yes, this first one is anti-dilutive. The first one is anti-dilutive. I have proved this thing. Okay, now the second one. Second one is no need to work. Listen, you know in share option how to decide dilutive and anti-dilutive. There is a technique. Share option which allow the holders to purchase the ordinary shares for six point five. That means we have offered our directors. We have offered our directors to buy us the share for six point five. But now look at what is the average share price. It's six point three five. So nobody will buy. <laughs> nobody will buy. They will say. We we don't need. It's better we buy from the market. It's better we buy from the market. Why we buy from you? So the, again, this is also anti-dilutive. This is also anti-dilutive because there will be no shares issued in the future. According to this scenario, nobody will take shares from you. So this is again again anti-dilutive. So answer is a. Answer is a. Answer is a. Now this is a very easy question. This is about dilutive. Listen, dilute. You know dilute. Just think. This is. Can you see this bottle? 
For example, this bottle is half filled with a concentrated juice. This bot just imagine this bottle is half filled right now. It's filled with water. If it is with extraordinary lemon drink, extraordinary concentrated lemon drink, and if I want to dilute the effect, I'll add water. I'll add water so there will be less concentration of the existing thing. So dilute means dilute means dilutive instruments are those instruments. If we include them, they will decrease. They will decrease your existing EPS. They will decrease your existing basic EPS. This is a very, you know, in dilute word is very famous word in normal discussion as well. Yes. Now, next thing, this is piece of cake. Come on, enjoy, enjoy. Let's party. Let's party. You know, the when listen to me. Even I say this thing many times in my classes for ratio analysis. If examiner has told you to use a certain formula in the in the examination, then use that formula. Don't even uh, don't even follow your teacher. But if the examiner is silent, then use the standard formula. If the examiner is silent, then use the exact standard formula and a standard formula for rows is PBIT divided by capital employed PBIT divided by capital employed. Now. What is PBIT in this whole game? This operating profit is PBIT. Operating profit is PBIT. Operating profit is PBIT, right? And you know, where is the capital employed is equity plus non-current. See this, this is your capital employed. Equity plus, this is your capital employed. So it is going to be 1890 000. Plus one three two zero multiply by hundred. Can you tell me the percentage? Can anybody tell me it's twenty percent? It's twenty percent. Yes, yes, we'll give you this question. Don't worry. It's 19.9, but somebody told me 20, so I've written 28. It's... Okay, let me write 19.9. Sorry. Now, this is a very general question. This is a very, very general question. Just common sense. It's like F1 level, uh, BT level. So to provide, indicate which type of entity each of the following objectives. I don't think this is F7 question, but still it's sort of theoretical. To provide assistance to wide range of individuals, not law firm, not local authority, charity. Yes, charity gives assistance, looks appropriate. To increase wealth, wealth maximization is like profit maximization. And this is obviously the business. The business businessman has this objective. The business organization has this objective, right? Then to break even. No hotel chain or construction companies, they are, they make profits. So school, state run school, yes, public school, public school. This is the, this is the perfect thing. They, they just want to serve. They just want to serve and don't want to incur any loss. They want to serve plus they don't want any loss. So that's why break even is appropriate for them. And now the last is to increase the revenue, not charity, not government department. Yes. Supermarket is appropriate. Good. Now, again, this is very good. Sometime I've give when I teach this topic, I just I give very different examples. Sometime if I'm in a good mood, let's see which of the following cannot 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 be capitalized, cannot be capitalized. Yes, correct answer. Legal fees. Yes, we capitalize when we buy a non-current asset. If there is any legal fees, we capitalize. And this initial testing cost are also capitalized. These are capitalized, but. Staff training cost, we don't capitalize. 
and initial operating losses while the demand for the assets build up this is also not capitalized listen you know the this point number 4 is technical what do you mean by point number 4 we the asset is turned on the asset is perfect it's in working condition but you know now the losses are because people are not coming people are not coming we don't have customers so it has nothing to do with the asset there is no problem in the asset asset is perfect so now these losses are because these the point number 4 i'm talking about point number 4 the point number 4 losses are because are because the demand is low lack of customers so there is nothing bad in the asset asset is already turned on but point number 3 is different initial testing cost means there are some assets that on the manual of that asset is written that in if you want to bring them in normal condition first you need to first you need to do some loss you need to do some loss right like for machineries or something first you need to scrap certain items in in it so that is the that yes pre production testing very good appropriate word that is point number 3 is about pre production testing pre production testing right okay so for question number 55 answer is b 55 answer is b now in this question the requirement is not written i but i know the requirement it's payable days you need to calculate payable days it's again very simple question time pass payable days credit uh, payable days means creditors payment period payable days means creditors payment period now you know the formula for creditor payments period is closing trade payables see this is closing trade payables divided by cost of sales this is the cost of sales it's 456000 into 365 closing trade payables divided by cost of sales into 365 closing trade payables divided by cost of sales into 365 yes the answer is 56 days answer is 56 days answer is 56 days now once again a good question is coming to you once again a very good a very very good question is coming to you let's see who who can solve it let me enlarge it let me enlarge it come on you have this is all, all complete one question okay question number 58 right from here till here it's it's complete one question you have 3 minutes 3 minutes please
Okay. Two answers. This is related to stage four as well. You know, stage four of IFRS 15 apportionment. Listen. The standalone price is 400 and 200. Listen. The standalone price of washing machine is 400. Or oh, let me write here. Wait. This is 400 and this is 200. So 4 plus 2 is 600. So what is the percentage? Can you tell me the percentage? 400 divided by 600, this is 66.67%. And 200 divided by 600 will be 33.33%. Okay. Now let me check the name. One is washing machine and other is dryer. This is washing machine. And this is your dryer. Okay. One is washing machine and the other one will be dryer. Okay. So now how much we total we got? Total amount we are getting is 510. See, this is the number. This is the total amount 510. Now, can you tell me, can anybody tell me what is the amount? Uh, let's apportion this total price. 510 multiplied by 66.67%. 510 multiplied by 66.67%. How much price should we give to this? 340 for this. And 510 multiply by and 170 for dryer. See, these are the after discounted price. These are what we call real prices. For washing machine, the real price is 340 and dryer is 170. Okay. Now, how many units of washing machine have you sold? How many units of washing machine have you sold? Yes, there are 250. Total units are 250. So let's calculate the revenue. Let's calculate the revenue for each of them. Let's calculate the revenue for each of them. 340 multiplied by 250 is how much? 340 multiplied by 250 is how much? Please help me. 85,000. Yes, very good. And what about this? 170 multiplied by 250. Once it's 42,500. So these are accurate revenues. These are accurate real revenues for washing machine and dryers, washing machine and dryers, okay? Plus, it is also written in the question, now giving you first one minute or 30 seconds to look at this thing. Because in my class, I used to teach like this. Remember this arrow and all. Yes, excellent. People are giving correct answers here. So these are the revenues, okay? Now listen, 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 listen. One more thing. Offering six months credit free of charge. That means we did credit sales. We did credit sales. So there must credit sales. So there must be a receivable. There must be a receivable. We have directly sold to customers. Okay. Now. Which two of the following Droughton should recognize revenue of 150,000 and a discount provided expense. No. Not at all, not at all discount. We never record discount as an expense. Now these discounts are simply canceled. These discount are simply canceled from sales. There is no such things that we book discount as an expense. It's wrong. B, Broughton should report a contract asset in its statement of a no. They should book a direct receivable, not contract asset. You remember the contract asset in construction industry when you were doing con contract asset, contract asset, because in contract asset, there is a difference between contract asset and receivable. Receivable means now you have to receive directly from customers. You have invoiced, you have invoiced the amount to customers and the customer is, is liable to pay you. It's an unconditional promise. Receivable is like unconditionally you will receive it, right? So the word contract asset is inappropriate. The real word is receivable here. The real world is receivable here. Now, see. Revenue in respect of selling. Yes, this is perfect. C. Point number C is perfect. Revenue for washing machine is 85,000. Revenue for washing machine is 85,000. Revenue for washing machine is 85,000. Now, as it provides a six months credit period, Broughton must recognize a proportion of the selling price as interest income. No. Why? 
you know it should be you know there is a word of significant financing components what is significant financing component you are providing goods now and you are receiving cash after few years you are providing goods now and you are receiving cash after few years that means there is a significant gap there is a significant gap between the date when you provide the goods and the date when you receive the cash but it should be significant and the significant should be at least one year significant for discounting there should be at least a one year gap and in this question the gap is only six months in this question the gap is only the gap is only six months okay so this one b is again inappropriate Re e revenue is recognized when control of the machine passes yes you know, revenue is recognized means this is about stage five. Revenue is recognized means this is about stage five. So in a stage five, you have two options, point in time and over time, point in time and over time. And my dear student, machine is a product when you, you transfer in one go. Machine is a product when which you transfer in one go. So normally for these products, you book revenue point in time. And when you book point in time, when the control is transferred, when the control is transferred. So C and E are the most appropriate one. C and E are the most appropriate one. How many have you done this question? How many of you have you done this? This was the good question. If you can do such question, then that means you have, till now you have studied something. How many you have you done? Please communicate on what chat, chat box. Point D is incorrect. Why? Because the gap is only six months. It should be minimum one year. Then you do discounting. It should be minimum one year. Then you do the discounting thing and interest income and all. It doesn't make any difference. Even if it is free of charge, but if the gap is one year, then you need to do discounting. Even it is a free of charge, but still you need to do discounting if the gap is one year or more. Okay. Question number 61 and 62. Two questions for you guys. Two questions for you guys. And giving you two minutes. It's quick theory questions. There is a dodge in question number 62. 61 and 62, you have two to three minutes. Okay. Listen. Which of the following statement is true according to IS 16 property plan and equipment? The fair value of the land and building must be based upon existing use basis. No. The fair value is market based. The fair value should be market based. This point number A is not appropriate. Assets that are carried under revaluation model must be revalued every five years. No, 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 no. If the carrying amount of the land and building is materially different from fair value, then they may be, no, then they must be revalued. You know, when do we revalue the asset? If you are using revaluation model and whenever there is a material change, whenever there is a material change in the market value, Whenever there is a material change in the market value, you need to revalue. So point number C is again incorrect. 
Now, an increase in the revaluation of asset is always credited directly to an initial revaluation. Yes, first time upward revaluation will go in the equity and equity means here other comprehensive income, right? So D is the correct answer. D is the exact answer, right? For 61. Now question number 62. 62, there is a dodge. There is a little dodge in 62. Let's see who recognize. A change a change in the assumptions, 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 assumptions means estimates. Assumptions are used for estimates. Assumptions are used for estimates. Used to measure the cost of inventory from first in, first out to weighted average. Although this is the example of change in accounting estimate, but they have used the word assumption. They have just changed the assumptions. So assumptions are used, assumptions are used to calculate estimate. So this is basically change in accounting estimate and changes in accounting estimates are always adjusted prospectively. Even if you can go and read my lecture, you can go and read the study text. Assum the word assumptions are specifically used with estimates, with changes in accounting estimate. Don't forget this. Now, a change to measure the investment properties at fair value. Yes, this is. This is change in accounting policy. This is change in accounting policy. Like we had previously, we we were we were valuing at cost. Now we are shifting to fair value. This is a change in policy. This is change in accounting policy. And yes, changes in accounting policy should be adjusted retrospectively. Then the correction of a material error in the measurement of closing inventory two years. Yes, this is prior period error. Prior period errors must also adjust retrospectively. So the answer is the point for point. First is prospectively and then last two are retrospectively. The first one is prospectively and the last two one are retrospectively. Yes, looking back. Okay, one more question for you guys. One more, not two more questions. Come on, do it. 63 and 64. 63 and 64. No, no. Point number two is changes in accounting policy. You had a policy to record, to report in, in, in investment property at cost. Now you change the policy to record at fair value. Changes from revaluation model to cost model, cost model to revaluation model, or fair value model to cost. It's basically changing the accounting policy. It's a principle, basically. Question number 64, the requirement is not given, just we need to discuss. For 64, I can understand the requirement is not clear. You just need to discuss it. Okay. Let me solve question number 63. On 1st January 2010, dates are very important. On 1st January 2010, uh, Sterling purchased a building for 500,000, charging deficit on a straight line over 25 years. So 500,000 divided by 25. Okay, now depreciation. 
after two years they are revaluing it after two years they are going to revaluate so depreciation year ended december 11 and then december 12 so this will be 50000 divided by 25 years is 20 years 20000 50000 divided by 25 years is 20000 so 20 and 20 okay it's going to be nbv at 1 1 2012 is like 460. Okay. That means at the date of revaluation, your NBV is 460,000. At the date of revaluation, your net book value is 460,000. Okay. Now check the revalued amount. Yes. The fair value at 1st January 12 is 644, 644,000. So let me write revalued to. Revalued to 644,000. Now, wait, 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 wait. How much is the revalued by? How much is revalued by? I'm writing, I'm going to write in the balancing figure. Revalued by is, I think, 204. Six, four, first, tell me 460 and it's 184. Okay. This is your revalued by. Okay. Still, the question is going on right now. We are standing at 1st January 12, but we sold it on 1st January 13. Right now, the revaluation date, the revaluation date at which we are standing right now, it's 1st January 12. But we have, we are going to sell it. We are going to sell it on 1st January 2013. 1st January 2013, right? And we are going to sell it for 800,000. We are going to sell it for 800,000. Now, one year depreciation. So can you tell me depreciation? Year ended December 12. Wait, this is your updated amount 644,000. Divide by what is the remaining life? What is the remaining life? Remaining life is 23 years. See, there is no change in life. The original life was 25 years and two years have been passed. So the remaining life is 23 years. So 644,000 divided by 23. What is the amount? 28. Okay. So this is one more year deposition. And finally, finally, your NBV at 1st of January 13 is 616. And you sold it, you sold it for 800,000. Simply they are asking the gain on disposal. Simply they are asking the gain. I think it's 184,000. Yes. This is your gain on disposal, gain on disposal or profit on disposal. This will go in PNL. This is the answer. One eighty four thousand 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 is the answer. You understood it? Students, please tell me. Please write on the chat box. Did you understand? Okay, now, this point number 64, you have seen in the final account as well. You know, in IAS 40, IAS 40 fair value model, in IAS 40 fair value model, we never depreciate the land and building. Just changes in fair value to be taken to the PNL. Okay, so. Must rave purchase a building for capital appreciation. Yes, it's IS 40. Simple. Purpose for 500,000 at the start of the accounting period. At the end of the year, the fair value is 575. Margrave accounting policy is to depreciate building over 50 years as part of 
property, plant and equipment and adopts the fair value model for investment property. See, this is the dodge. They are diverting your mind towards PPE. They are diverting your mind towards PPE, but this asset is bought for capital appreciation. See this. This asset is bought for capital appreciation means it's IS40. And in IS40, they are using which model? In IS40, they are using which model? Fair value model. So in fair model, value model, there is no depreciation. In fair value model, there is no depreciation. Just changes taken to PNL. So from 500 to 575, you just make to have, you just have to write the entry, this investment property debit. 75,000 and PNL credit. PNL credit 75,000, right? Investment property debit 75,000 and PNL credit 75,000. Correct. Next. Now again, two questions for you. Again, two questions for you. Start. First of all, let me tell you one thing. In this question, in this question, you know, there is a policy, there is a, there is a policy of excess depreciation transfer. Remember excess depreciation transfer in IS 16 revaluation. You, you guys used to make this entry revaluation reserve debit and retain earning credit. So for this question, I'm telling you follow that policy. Although they have not written, they have not written, but I'm telling you follow this policy for excess depreciation transfer. Okay. Start question number 67 and 68. 67 is about compulsory disposal cost and 68 is about revaluation. 67 is about compulsory disposal cost and 68 is about re annual realization. Yes, annual realization. 68 is about revaluation. Okay, let me do. Lomax has a, an accounting year end of 30th November 14. 30th November 14. Please look at here. Lomax had a processing plant installed at a cost of 200 million at 1st June 2014. It's mid of the year. See, if you see the account, if you count the accounting months, it's 30th November 14 is the year end. So 1st June is the mid, mid. Okay. The plant is not 100% efficient and the inefficiency causes the surrounding land to be contaminated. Local legislation requires the land to be restored compulsory disposal costs to its original condition at the end of the assets useful life in 20 years. Important. The C, they have given you ready-made present value, ready-made, no tension. 
the present value of the cleaning operation is 20 million so listen this is the this is the cost of plant and this is the cost of compulsory disposal cost so obviously we will capitalize both of them we will capitalize both of them so cost of plant is 200 million let let's play in millions then you have then you have compulsory disposal cost or we call it decommissioning liability disposal cost is 20 so 200 plus 20 is 220 or still if you want to know the entry of this compulsory disposal cost it will be ppe debit ppe debit and provision credit property plant and equipment debit and provision credit okay so my dear students this is your going to be your 220 million this is going to be 220 million 220 million is the cost and now what is the life life is 20 years life is 20 years so the depreciation will be 220 divided by 20 years this is going to be per year 220 divided by 20 years years so this will be per year depreciation and you have only six months before the year end you have six months before the year end so it will be 11 divided by 6 upon 12 will be 5.5 million 5.5 million okay so this 5.5 million means 5500000 yes this will go this will be going in the pnl as a depreciation as a depreciation i'm not talking about the interest cost there is one more cost there is one more cost comes in this topic which we all have studied but right now examiner is asking only should be included in the statement of profit and loss in respect of depreciation so the answer is 5500000 000 answer is 55000 5.5 million and yes this is easy yes this is easy question not difficult Now, the next is Whitlock has an accounting year end of 31st December. Right now, we are standing at 31st December 13. 31st December 13 is the year end. On 1st January 20, 2002, on 1st of January 2002, Whitlock purchased building at a cost of 500,000. At a cost of 500,000. See the date. 1st January 2002 means 11 years back. 11 years back. Dates are important. Now, with, for, with a useful life initially, it was 50 years. On 1st January 2012, that means after 10 years, if you find the gap between 1st of January 2002 and 1st of January 2012, it's exactly 10 years. It's exactly 10 years, okay? The building were revalued at 800,000 with no change to the remaining useful life, with no change to the remaining useful life, okay? Following a reduction in the prices on the property market, the building was assessed to having a fair value of 350,000. Should I tell you one great thing? What is the case? This is the case of upward revaluation and then downward. First upward and then downward revaluation. This is the story. This is the story of upward and then downward. Now let me do it for you. Listen. Initial cost was, I think, how much? It's 500,000 in 50 years. Okay. Depreciation is 50,000 divided by 50 years. It's 1,000 per annum. 1,000 per annum multiply by, sorry, it's 1,000, not 10,000. It's 10,000 per annum multiply by 10 years. So it's going to be 100,000. It's going to be 100,000. So NBV, NBV at 1, 1, 20, 12. NBV at 1 1 2012 will be 
400,000, 400,000, okay? Is this the case? Now, what is the revalued amount? What is the revalued amount? Revalued to, revalued to how much? Revalued to its 800, okay. So how much is the revalued by? How much is the balancing number? The revalued by amount is 400,000, correct? Now, what is the next date? Now, let's start depreciate. Depreciate year ended December 12. And let me check, check the other date of revaluation. It's December 13. It's December 13, not 1st January 13. See, the next date of revaluation is 31st December 13. That means two years. That means two years. Okay, now tell me, tell me the new depreciation. The new depreciation will be 800,000 divided by 40 years because no change in life. Initially, the life was 50 years. After 10 years, the life is remaining life is 40 years. So 800 divided by 40 is I think 20,000. So 20 and 20. Now, can anybody tell me what is the extra depreciation? Can anybody tell me what is the extra? When we were not doing any revaluation, when we were not doing any revaluation, the per year depreciation was 10,000. When we were not doing any revaluation, the per year depreciation was 10. So now the per year depreciation is 20. Compare it with two years. So there is an extra, there is an extra, there is an incremental depreciation of 10,000 every year. There is an incremental depreciation of 10,000 every year. You, you guys are getting. So you remember for incremental depreciation, we have to make this entry. Revaluation reserve debit 10, retained earning credit 10. First year, one year, and in the other year, again, we have to make this entry. Revaluation reserve, okay, right? So now can you tell me this was your revaluation reserve? This was your revaluation of 40. Four, sorry, 400,000 was your revaluation reserve. But how much is realized? 20,000 is realized. So how much revaluation reserve is left now? 380,000 is the revaluation reserve which is left. And now we are at, we are at NVV at 31st December 13. This is going to be 760,000. And we, we add 31st December 16, 13, it's 760,000. Wait, the question is still left. Can anybody tell me now the final fair value? Now the fair value is 350, I think. How much is this? Yes, it's 350. So how much is devalued by? The devaluation is 410, 410, look at here, look at here. The devaluation is 410. Let me show you with double entries. Let me show you guys with double entries. You know, let first let me recall you the rule. The rule is whenever first asset goes up and then goes down, first asset goes up and then goes down. So first you need to cancel out the complete revaluation. So whenever the asset is going down, Whenever the asset is going down and if there is any revaluation reserve left. So first you need to cancel. First you need to cancel the existing revaluation reserve. And yes, we have existing revaluation reserve of 380. Listen, so the entry will be PPE credit 410. Revaluation reserve or OCI will be debited by 380. And yes, then the difference will go in PNL. Then the difference will go in the PNL. Examiner is asking you this entry. Examiner is asking you this entry.
did you guys understand anybody of you did this question himself or herself i think this question was achievable it although it was lengthy but it was achievable that eps question was tricky one i think Now for this question, you know, I made a short vlog, vlog, like in 2020, I remember it, August, 2020, I made, I made a vlog in Hindi Urdu language. And the name of that vlog was, you sure depreciation is an expense? You sure depreciation is an expense? I'll send you guys as well. Excellent vlog. So, and even we discussed this issue in the class as well. Now, try 69 and 70 is a different thing. Don't try 70, 70, I'll teach you. Don't worry, it's common sense. 70 is just common sense. You guys try 69. Okay, let me start. You know, once the development criteria is met, is fulfilled, so now you need to capitalize, you need to capitalize the development cost. But now use your common sense. For development cost, you have labor, you have labor, and you have other expenses which you capitalize, but you are, you are also using the machine. You are also using, using, just concentrate on using the machine. Using the machine means depreciation of machine using the machine means depreciation of machine so now this depreciation will be capitalized this depreciation will be capitalized on this development project and when in the future when in the future you will be launching you will be launching this development project then you will amortize this whole project okay so this is a very special case in which you capitalize in which you capitalize the depreciation expense in which you capitalize the depreciation expense okay now listen Perk has an accounting year end of 31st March. Dates are important. Examiner has written this in their report that students do mistake with the dates. Perk launched the development stage of a new product to produce a new pharmaceutical drug on 1st November 13. Okay. Although the development stage has been started, but let's see when the criteria is going to meet, right? The, the major thing is criteria. Expenditure of 25,000 per month was incurred until the project was completed on 1st March 2014. That means it's November, December, Jan, Feb, four months, just, just four months on the project, just four months working on the project. And from 1st March, it is completed. Now, when the drug went into the immediate production, okay. The directors became, the directors became, this is very important line, confident of the project success on 1st January 20, 
2014. This is the date C. 1st January 2014 is the date when the criteria is met. When the criteria is met. So before these before before 1st January, the these two months, November and December, it will go immediately in PNL. So this 25,000 for November and 25,000 for December will straight away go in PNL. 25,000 for November and 25,000 for December will straight away, straight away it will go in PNL in profit and loss account. Okay. Now, but this January, this January and Feb, January and Feb, these two months, 25,000 and 25,000, these two will be capitalized. These two will be capitalized. Now go slow, go slow. January and Feb, 25 and 25, 50,000 will be capitalized. Now read. The drug has an estimated, the drug has an estimated life of 10 years, of 10 years, I think this is not that question. It's a different question. That question is different of depreciation capitalization. I'll, I'll show you that question. The drug has an estimated life of 10 years. Time apportionment is used by FERC where applicable. Okay, easy. Now listen. So your capitalized development cost is 50,000. Your capitalized development cost is 50,000. And you launch the project on March. And your year end is 31st March. So just one month depreciation you need to book. So wait, 50,000 is your capitalized development cost. 50,000 is the total capitalized development cost divided by life is 10 years, 10 years into one upon 12. Divide by life is 10 years. So when you divide it by 10 years, you will get per, per year depreciation. 50,000 divided by 10 years, you will get per year depreciation. And when you do one upon 12, you will get how much one month day one month deposition is four one seven okay so this four one seven amortization will go in pnl this four one seven amortization will go in pnl and also these two these two these two so the total amount will be fifty four one seven so what amount will frank charge to profit and loss for development costs including amortization it's five zero four one seven what does it mean? It means one month amortization. It means one month amortization and the two months of development cost expense. Did you understand this? Did you understand this or not? Even you guys have done this type of question in F7 level as well. Did anybody solve this question? Somebody is asking why we don't take two month depreciation because the project started, the production started on 1st March and the year end is 31st March. So from 1st March to 31st March, only one month, my dear student. Now, I have one more question, which is almost duplicate of this question, which I was telling you. Wait, let me show you. Let me show you. Yes, please try this 78. Please try this 78. Please try this 78. Let's see who can do it. 78.
78, please. Seventy-eight. Yes. See, Jasmine spent four hundred thousand for the development of a new pharmaceutical product in the year ended thirtieth September fourteen. As part of the work carried out, some specialized machinery was purchased on first October thirteen at a cost of one fifty. Now, for this project, this development project, we have brought a special machine. So this machine is also using, this machine is also being used for this project. So the depreciation of machine will be capitalized in this project. Remember, I just told you. So 150,000 divided by 10 years, the life of the machine is 10 years. So the depreciation of machine is 15 plus the cost of the other cost of development is 400,000. So you will have a 415,000 is the answer. 41. The maximum amount that Jasmine can carry it forward as development expenditure as at 30th September 14 is 415,000. Did you understand this? Did you understand this? Tell me. Now listen, this question number 77, I have already taught in one of my previous revision days. This 77, I have already taught in one of my previous revision days. It's on YouTube as well as in your LMS. Question number 77, it's very important question. It's, it's excellent question, right? But I have already taught this. It has already been recorded. So you can see this question number 77 from my previous uh, YouTube, like it's MCQ practice on YouTube as well uh, and in your LMS. So we are not in inputting our pre precious time. Now, can you tell me what is the answer of 76? What is the answer of 76? Let's see. What is the answer of 76? Can anybody tell me? Easy, 76 is easy. Listen, internally developed brands must not, must not internally generated brands is like internally generated goodwill and they are not allowed to be capitalized according to IS 38. Brands purchased from a competitor must be, yes. Purchase brands and purchase goodwill must be. There is no option. There is no option at all. There is no option at all. There is no option at all. Now, this 73, in accordance with IFRS 3 business combination, which two of the following statements are true? Which two of the following statements are true? Giving you again one minute. One minute for you. Come on, come on, take your decision. Take your decision. Now listen, in accordance with IFRS 3 business combination, which two of the following statements are true? Number one, goodwill should be amortized over its useful life. No, we never amortize goodwill. Goodwill can be, no, never, 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 N-E-V-E-R. Goodwill should be tested for impairment annually. Yes, this looks correct. Goodwill should be carried at its cost. No, it goes down. You need to take, you need to do impairment testing. And if it is going down, remember consolidation, you need to impair. A bargain purchase. Bargain purchase is what negative goodwill sometimes. Remember, is recognized as income immediately. Yes, it's your income. Bargain, gain on bargain purchase is your income. Gain on bargain purchase is your income. Remember. 
then my dear students one more one more one more question let's see how much consolidation questions you have done in this there is a little test of consolidation area let's see question number 72 it's not difficult at all simple question right question number 72 is simple question but in the end last line there is a little testing of consolidation Yes, please think your options and then I'll tell you. Just you have one minute, one or two minutes. Think your options and then I'll tell you. Now listen, indicate whether each of the following is recognized as an intangible asset amortized over its use. Okay, yes, research costs, research costs, simple. Research costs goes directly in PNL. This is the third point. Now, cost associated with developing a commercially viable drug. Yes, cost associated with developing development costs with the criteria. Yes, you listen. You capitalize it and then you amortize it over the useful life. You capitalize it and you amortize. Once you launch it, you amortize it. Yes, obviously. Capitalize it and once you launch it, you amortize it over a useful life. Purchase goodwill. Purchase goodwill is your asset, but you don't amortize. It's your asset. Purchase goodwill consolidation. Remember consolidation. Recognize an asset, but not amortize. Now, cost associated with developing a customer list now wait wait don't run don't run please this means customer list means it's like your internally generated goodwill listen listen to me listen to me you know standard has not allowed you to recapitalize internally generated goodwill so there are many things in eternally generated goodwill. The customer satisfaction which you are giving, the late night services you are giving, you are doing marketing and through marketing, you develop your goodwill. Thousands and millions of people see you on social media and whatever it is. So through this, you create your internally generated goodwill. Through good service, you create. Similarly, if you have good customer data with respect to time, you generate customer data with big brands. They have a great history. They have a great history of customer data. So the customer data or customer list is also part of internally generated goodwill. Customer list is also part of internally generated goodwill. So you cannot capitalize it. It's immediately expense. Now, once again, one thing I'll need, I, I would like to revise you guys. I would like to revise one thing to you guys. Why, why you cannot capitalize internally generated goodwill? Why you cannot capitalize internally generated goodwill? Although it's an asset, it's an excellent asset, my favorite asset. It's one of my favorite asset. You know what is the logic? The law, logic is you cannot calculate the cost, original cost. You cannot calculate the original cost of internally generated asset, internally generated goodwill. You cannot calculate the original cost of internally generated goodwill. And in my class, I give this example. Listen, how you calculate it, how you generate internally generated goodwill by replying to your students, by replying to your customers, by taking care by talking to them nicely, by favoring them. So if I have replied my student at late night 2 a.m., can I calculate the cost of this effort? Can I calculate the cost of this effort? No, this effort cannot be calculated. So that's why internally generated goodwill cannot be 
capitalize right so this cost associated with developing means we are developing ourselves with respect to time we are giving good good satisfaction to customers so they are giving you us our data and all so this is all part of internally generated goodwill and internally generated goodwill cannot be capitalized this is the answer for this now a brand acquired on a business combination a brand acquired on a business combination now hope you remember the consolidation question in consolidation question when parent company when parent company acquires the running business of company so sometimes as company has some brands as company has already launched some brands so parent company bought those brands so now those brands are purchase brands for parent company those brands are purchase brands of par for parent company and yes yes parent company can capitalize those purchase brands parent company can capitalize those purchase brands parent company can capitalize those purchase brands and yes if it is given if their life is given in the question if in many questions in many consolidation question purchase brands life are given you can go and see the kit exam kit past paper then you amortize it as well then you amortize it as well recognize you can see the past papers you go and check the past papers of consolidation that at the date of takeover there are some brands with s company so not only we recognize it because it's a purchase brand for p company and we amortize it as well we amortize it as well yes excellent excellent somebody is has just commented now one last question i am teaching this is a extra question normally this question i would say it's general knowledge i will teach you like in like a maths a mathematician listen to me this 70 it's about historical cost and all before i start this question i just tell you i just give you one example wait for example my earnings last year was 100000 okay 100000 was my earning last year and one chair cost 1000 the price of one chair was 1000 so tell me how many chairs i can buy or make it make it simple make it 10000 last year my income was 10000 and one chair was equal to 1000 so that means i can buy 10 chairs i can only buy 10 chairs last year okay now listen wait but this was 2022 but this year my income increased by 5% that means 10500 10500 but now one chair cost 1100 the price of one chair is equal to 1100 sorry can i buy the same number of chairs now can i buy the same number of chairs now no my real income is decrease in reality i came down in reality i came down because now i can buy only 9.5 chairs or something okay so because of inflation your real buying power goes down this is happening worldwide nowadays especially in pakistan it's very common in reality those who are earning in pakistan or countries like where the inflation is very high their wealth is depleting their their incomes their real incomes are decreasing and you can see this even i give you one real example for the very first time for the very first time pakistan has rejected the hajj quota if you have seen the news for the very first time the act, we have rejected we have not fulfilled the actual hajj quota this time you know why because of this thing the real incomes are going down because of high super inflation so did you understand now listen let me change the example if 
see one chair was last year 1000 now it's 1100 so there is a 10% there is a 10% increase in the chair price there is a 10% increase in the chair price if my income also went up by 10% 11000 now i can buy 10 chairs so you know what does it mean it means although my my income my nominal income increase but in reality i am same in reality, there is no real improvement. There is no real improvement. Although physically it looks like from 10,000 to 11,000. Apparently it looks like I last year I was just running 10,000, now 11,000. But right now, see the inflation rate is 10%. And my increment rate is also 10%. So in reality, I am at the same stage. No more growth. No more real growth. Are you getting or not? So if I want a real growth, if I want to re I, if I want a real growth, so I must beat the inflation. Like if the inflation is 10% then, and my salary is going up by 20%. So that means in reality, I have done some improvement. Are you getting my point or not? Then I can claim that I have earned something. If I have beaten the inflation, I have my increment is more than the inflation rate, then I can proudly say that I am making some good thing. Okay, let's move to this question. Now read it. Read the question. Events using uses historical cost accounting in preparing its financial statement. This is the last question. Please just two, three minutes. At 1st October 2014, events had capital of 1800,000. In the year ended 30th September 15, events made a profit, profit, apparently there is a profit of 500,000. Specific inflation price, this is irrelevant. This is irrelevant. Yes, general price level, general price inflation. This is for the whole country. This is relevant. It's 5%. Using the information below, identifying, selecting the correct branch. There is no branches given. No diagram is given. What amount of profit events would recognize using, using with real financial capital maintenance method? What is the real growth? They are asking about the real growth. Now wait. They are asking about the real growth. Our, see this, see this, our existing capital was 800,000. This is what your existing capital. Okay. So you have, if you want to maintain your existing standard, no growth. If you want to maintain your existing standard, no growth, at least you sh your capital, your nominal capital should increase by inflation rate. And inflation rate was 5%. Inflation rate was how much? 5%. So can you multiply 1800 by 5%? Because this is the thing which you need to maintain your standard. No real growth. So 1800,000 was your capital at the beginning of the year. Multiply by 5% is how much? 90,000. My dear student, listen. That means 90,000 profit will be consumed to maintain your existing standard of living. Existing, no growth. And how much actual profit you made? You made actual 500,000 profit. And out of this, how much will be used to maintain your existing existing standard in terms of real price level 90,000? So 4, 10,000 is your extra, extra real profit, which will add in your wealth which will add in your wealth. Otherwise, this 90,000, this 90,000 just covered the inflation effect. This 90,000 of the profit just covered your inflation effect. And whatever is over and above, whatever profit is over and above of 90,000, that will add your real wealth. If you have brain, you can understand. Otherwise, no issue. Out of 100 marks, you can score 98 marks. You can score 98 marks. 98 marks still not bad. 98 marks is still not bad.
now my dear student listen to me my final words are very important please don't first of all f7 is not that much difficult paper f7 is not that much difficult paper don't don't take the attitude don't take the tension if you take the attitude of this paper this paper will sit here and this is the real life story whenever you take the attitude of somebody that person sits <laughs> here and whenever you ignore it you enjoy you enjoy so the thing is treat when when i was the student i remember i used to treat acc as bcom i used to treat acc as bcom and believe, believe me in, in last 15 days i used to study and i used to clear because i was a very busy teacher when i was a student of acc i was a busy teacher and i remember i still remember listen when i was giving my sbr paper listen to me it's a motivation for you when i was giving as a student my sbr paper at that time i was teaching 102 students i remember i took the payment from the institute 102 students of f6 yes this number 102 students of f6 i re i repeat when i was a student of SBR, I'm talking about old days. When I was a student of SBR, at that time I was teaching 102 students of F6. At that time, there was only phys physical teaching in Karachi. Just thought, just think about my life, busyness. Just think. Two roles as a teacher, as a student as well. And you know, at that time, I was not able to attend any class because of the busy schedule plus because of the perception of teacher. Because if I, if I go to any institute as a student for SBR, the perception of students will go, will change about me. Just think about it. So in this way, we, 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 we covered our journey. So it's time for you guys to work hard because now the time has changed. You know, there is one word, wait. AI. Artificial intelligence. This artificial intelligence is going to ruin the whole world. The whole world's power will be will, will come in few hands. And it has already been, already been done. Already been done. Millions, because of artificial intelligence, 230 million job loss expected. 230 million. 230 million. In Urdu language, we called it 23 crore. 23 crore jobs. Yes, and this artificial intelligence will create 100 million or 97 million new jobs. So now you have to decide. You have to decide. You want to be part of that 230 million unemployed people, or you want to join that 97 million employed skilled skilled group so just think about just just keep this thing in mind acca is now not your end acca is not your end it's a journey it's your it's few steps now because of with acca or after acca you have to do many things like data analytics artificial intelligence many many softwares this is this is the issue even I would recommend one thing to you guys. Many of you have done F6 as well, F6 paper. So you guys, there is a there is a skill which we call return filing, income tax return filing. In F6 paper of ACCA, we don't teach that AC, HMRC website. We don't because it's not part of the course. But yes, you know the back end of all the F6. You know the basics of all the taxation and all. So if you guys learn this return filing skills, of any developed nation like UK, United States, Australia, New Zealand. So by sitting in your country like India, Pakistan, Nepal, or any Bangladesh, you can give services to those people and you can earn in dollars and pounds. So it's time to change your strategy, right? Are you getting? So best of luck, prayers for you guys, and be confident. And stay in the WhatsApp group. I'll send you many things. Even I'll send you the slides and recording as well. So it's time to sign off. Take care. Allah Hafiz. Thank you.